came to England to study at London School of Economics. And my main uh, degree here was to understand how to put together a program of work that can be scaled up. And after LSE, I worked briefly for the corporate world and I realized it wasn't for me. And I moved back into working in nonprofits and I joined a group called Peace Direct, which is a small startup nonprofit that had a very big ambition, which was to make peace building as clever and relevant as human right. And I worked there, made some good friends, learned a lot. And from there I moved to work um, for the Elton John Foundation, uh, uh, one of the key grant makers for HIV. Um, for the last 11 years, I was helping the foundation expand their grant making work uh, across the world. And now I am running a professional advisory service charity called Spring Impact. And I'm running the UK office, which I joined during lockdown and has been amazing since. Spring Impact is an incredible uh, charity. We've been going for 10 years now. We work with 250 organizations and we have a very simple premise, which is we want to support ambitious teams, bring the ideas to scale. There's so many good ideas out there that have been discovered by great teams, but often they don't get scale. They don't get to, uh, to support more people. They don't get to get where they need to get to. So Spring Impact put together a group of experts. We have a very clear methodologies. We support these partnerships to be able to first validate if the idea is ready for scale. And once they're validated, help them choose the best pathway to scale the idea. And once they're scaling the idea, we will work with them to ensure that the idea sits within a broad ecosystem of support so that they can they can go on and support more people and also we build the capacity of the partner so they can do this on their own in the future they will need us so when i was grant making i realized often people required more than money you know the partners we were working with required a different kind of support that wasn't just the cash the cash is important and that's really important for them to be able to do the work but there was a lack of capacity around other leadership, financial capacity, or its general understanding of a good program scale up. And when I was making grants, we had a lot of ideas come to us. And often you feel like I've seen this idea before, but it keeps popping up, but often it doesn't go where it needs to go. So I was looking for a group of people who are not providing funding, who are not implementing programs, but advising uh, to ensure those good ideas come to scale. And, and Springpark was for me a very, perfect home for me to apply those skills and ideas, but also an opportunity for me to learn and also to grow as a person. So I'm, I'm kind of believe my luck when I found Spring Impact. Yes, of course, there are barriers. Uh, it is harder for a Black man uh, to lead in a space like this. There are very few of us Black leaders in the charity space and generally in the commercial world. And the main barriers you overcome with, you come across are firstly understanding. People don't quite get you in the first time. So you have to explain yourself a little bit more than others. And often you are held to a much higher standard um, than others because people feel like you've got here, so you must be really good, um, which puts a lot of pressure for you, on you to perform even harder. Um, and the last thing for me, the last, broad barriers you face is the microaggressions, you know, and often people hide that within ignorance or, you know, they'll say something because, oh, I didn't know that was offensive or I didn't know that come across badly. So you learn kind of to, um, to push back where you need to push back and also to look away if you need to look away, but kind of to stay focused on what you need to do. I think the charity sector has a benefit in the sense that we are starting from a good place. You know, people who work in charity often want to do better. They are much more open. So I think the leaders of this sector should lean in and bring in diverse communities with them. Because often you hear charities say that we will only work with a charity that's been led by people who have been supported. But we have to mirror that within ourselves as well, on our boards, in our staff. So it, it brings two things. One, it brings 
you better intelligence about what's happening. So if you have someone from the community already on your staff membership, on your board, you have a better connection, but also it, it allows you to be able to extend the work you're doing in a much more holistic way than just focusing on a, on a recipient and giving and receiving, it becomes much more of a partnership. Um, the other area I feel that we could do more in the child sector is to in, encourage uh, internships, especially of minority communities who are not coming to the sector because often they don't have the resources or they don't see themselves as part of the sector. So if we can start bringing young people in when they're still in the school, when, when they're still in the university, then they will understand how the sector works and they will see themselves within the sector as well. I am on the Council of the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and it is an incredible university that has done amazing during this pandemic. They've also done an incredible achievement, as you might have seen in the news, about the discovery of the malaria vaccination. And I believe, for me, knowledge is an asset that you cannot lose. Nobody can take it away from you. Once you know, you know, and that allows you to prosper. And I feel like we should bring that more of that understanding to the community to show what the Black people have done here and elsewhere, what Black leaders have done, but also to inspire young children to see that there have been other people ahead of them who have been able to trail some path and deliver some great results. So I feel education is important both for the wider public to understand um, what has been done, but also for the, for the Black community to understand the history and, and where they've come from and celebrate the successes that have been achieved due to Black people. Often when you hear about um, a great discovery, um, people often look at the one person who discovered it, but they don't look at the ecosystem around that person. Um, when I was young, I read that um, a white man discovered Lake Victoria in East Africa. Um, and then I closed my eyes and tried to imagine who was around him. And we, 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 we don't even have their names, you know, because this would probably be other black people who helped this person find the lake, showed him the lake, protected this person on their way there, fed them, gave them shelter, and also helped them come back and tell the world the story. But we don't hear about those people. And I want more and more of that to be told. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Just go for it. Let nobody hold you back. But remember to look after each other. It's lonely being a Black leader. So if you see another Black leader, please look out for them. Protect them. Support them. Because together we will grow. Alone will be harder. My mother inspires me. I think she's an incredible woman who has been able to achieve so much and is never afraid of pushing the limits of what she can do. She has managed to raise five incredible human beings, took them all through university, uh, who have incredible careers all around the world, despite herself never been to university. You know, she has been able to create a pathway for each of us because she had bigger dreams for us all. And I'm really proud of her and she's my best friend as well. I'm proud of most of the partnerships I've created, the people I've met along the way who has enabled me to succeed, but also the change I've been able to create because of those partnerships. I am particularly proud of uh, being a leader in helping fight HIV. I feel like I was part of a discussion, a conversation that had been able to push back uh, on HIV in a much more significant way. And I brought, I brought a lot of um, different thinking to the discussion. I brought a lot of energy, optimism, and a lot of uh, kindness to it because Without compassion and optimism, we won't be able to overcome some of these big challenges in the world. So I'm really proud of people, proud of partnership, proud of, I'm just really proud of so many things. 